characters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here, Tiger Technician. So we're looking at the Dow up 40 at 4,000. Uh, this is the S&P. So this is the E-mini. Uh, one minute chart. Looking for a leg D. New recovery high today. Let's just get back to our story. We've got the Dow. <clears throat> there we go. Dollar I-N-D-U. There we are. The Dow is up 149 and 35,430. This big red candle is very significant for me. That's the one from yesterday. Why? Because it's suggesting to me that we've done a one-to-one -one parallel, uh, Chapman Wave parallel upside extension. And the target that I had was right there at about 35,570. We actually went to 35,633. Uh, now, these are the things that are very important to me. I've discussed this over and over and again for weeks and weeks, that this nine-period exponential moving average has been moving higher. I went against everything because at that peak D, we did take a, a short, and we had a very a, a pretty tight stop, got stopped out, and it was really, uh, I went against my own technique because that nine-period moving average, as I said before, um, it, it's imperative for a market uh, that is turning around to see that nine period move negative and then the price takes out. In this case, the green is the nine period moving average, the 14 is the uh, is the black moving average right there. And then take take out the low and start to close underneath so you can get at least a sell signal, maybe upgrade to a sell mode. But the price would have to go sharply below to get that green to go pink. So it's a process. It's either you've got bad news that comes out and just filters the market so that within two or three days it is in your local newspaper, let alone uh, you know, APA starts reporting it at every hour of the day. We don't have that right now. In fact, we're at a point where we were climbing a wall of worry and now that wall of worry seems to be dissipating some. What, what, what is the market going to crawl? So I'm looking at this and saying there's a chance that we're looking at some kind of a rollover. Suddenly there's bad news, but it's almost at the end. So we'll get, I guess I need to do this. We get an internal high and a residual high. So let me just do this for one second here. So within this context, look how much higher we are from the November of 22 cap that was put on the market at about 34,712. What we're looking at is this is the first period that not only have we closed above that trend line for two to three out of four uh, sessions, it's gone on for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Today's the tenth session above that trend line. I have to look at this and say we've now built the resistance level turned it into a huge support level in the 34,000 to 33,500 area. So I consider that to be a really big positive. That's number one. Number two is get out of this. It's Technical Friday, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to do this all in the first segment because I had a whole bunch of questions I do want to get to. So look at this. This is the gray. It's, it's just a, the closing price of the instruments that we're looking at. And all I have is the 9 and 14 crossovers, green when it's uh, positive, pink when it's negative. Whoosh, it should come up right now. Did I say whoosh? One, two, there it is. Four, five, six. What's going on? Uh, did I, I did not refresh? No, don't do this to me, please. There it is. Okay. So what we've got is, uh, remember, this is, this is the Dow. I'll keep it as I showed it back in May, May the 3rd, at 32,684. May the 3rd was right there, and I said, uh, right there. All right, it's gone underneath. Is it going to go pink? And uh, it went pink, 
and it stayed pink for a while. And the market kept getting, making low lows and lower highs, and then it went green. And then I said, this is the same thing with the left side, right side, uh, um, move over the nine period moving average, and now we're going to come down. It's going to go pink. Well, we got out of um, our trading longs and the Dow right there, and what it did was it started to move up. And that green did not turn pink. The nine period moving held. It's held, held. Are we now on the left side and we're going to be watching a right side move uh, either slightly above, right on, or just below the left side high? Uh, that's the high of yesterday, actually. And now what we need to look at is does the nine period moving average show weakness? At this particular point, it's the price that's going to make it weak because everything's strong. So that is internal strength. So I'm going to do this quickly because I'm going to try to cover questions that I got at the same time. Look, a question came in on the SMHs. We went short because I thought that that was going to be the move down. Well, it was briefly, but then we had a bounce. And now that nine period moving average has deflected to the upside with the price at a new recovery high. Um, let me just see. I don't know. It's not a new recovery high. Let me just go back to the actual chart itself, SMH, semiconductor ETF. Typed it in the wrong place. Let me type it in here, SMH. There it is. Oh, we're almost at a high. Uh, at a, a, not only just a, a recovery high, but an all-time high. Uh, 159.42 was the all-time high in November of 2021. We are trading at 160. Uh, we're at 160.43. We're above that high. So the question came in. <coughs> um, I've begun shorting uh, the SMHs. I'm about to add another one today. What I've got 165 stop. Where would where would you? Uh, what do you think would be the downside action? So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use everything that I, all the tools I have right now to just. Uh, you know my market stance. My market stance right now is that I think we're in a topping formation. It's a, going to be a slow rollover, and you've now got tremendous support in that cushion that was resistance. Okay, so let's just get that off the table. It's also very selective. Some areas that you'd expect to be doing very well right now are stalling, and others are, are actually leading. And you've got sectors where, and I'll do this because it's all part of it. Look at this. Intel suddenly comes alive. Poor old Intel gaps up and is making this beautiful cup formation, trying to tackle the B that peak B that failed on the 25th, I think it was, of June at ooh, uh, 37, 31, 37, 31. Here we are at 30, 35, 98 is the high today. 30, 36 is 36, 98. Oh, I guess I am going to have to get my glasses. 36, 98. Okay. So, and the weekly chart is breaking out. And yet, this is a stock that was up at now 70 twice back in 10, 2020, 2020, 2021. Um, and look what happened. It plunged down to the 24 area, 24.59, double bottom at 24.73. So this is now helping. So that's what I always talk about when you've got a rotational direction, either on the upside or the downside, that what was beat. It suddenly become strong. I mean, I have someone there now uh, that's just saying Boeing. Oh, Boeing was very poor. Suddenly it's a leader. Triple M, very poor. Now it's a little bit of a leader. I'll be back in a moment. That was up 178. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I was taking for Friday, so I'm going to try to do everything yet. Yeah, one minute chart, just made a leg D, possibly a peak D, um, and a new uh, day high. Leg D, the 10-minute uh, chart, look at the way. But it crossed positive right here. I've been doing a lot of work on this two-click type session. Yesterday was almost a two-click uh, session. But wait a minute. We've got um, a high here of 45.82.50. This bar that went L with a 9 period we crossed positive. And it's still positive. You've gone from the high. I'll go I know off the low. I'll just go from the high of 45.82. And here we are at 46.0. Six, I believe someone in the day, I can't remember, just off the hand said 4606 looks like a good uh, area for a target when we were way down the 4590s. Uh, yeah, good good call. And this is going to be leg E. We watch it happens. Yeah, there could be a little digestive phase right here. This is the same thing. The nine period moving average in the 10 minute chart, unless there's a sudden news event that really tanks, who knows, oil, it doesn't matter what it is, tanks it and the S&P 10-minute chart drops under 49, 49.90, 45.90. 45.90 is at 46.04 right now. I mean, that's a big pullback. That'll get to the green to turn pink. That's So it's either a process that takes time for it to wear out the um, buying pressure or it's a sudden news event. We don't have any black news. Well, well, I call it dark news cloud cover. We're just a dark. It's like when those thunder clouds are there. We had them last night. Those and the lightning and the thunder, and you suddenly get this whoosh of a downstorm. And it either lasts when it's like that. It doesn't last that long. But when it's a very deep bad news thing, it goes on for days. And the S and P is down 50, and it tries to rally, and it closes down 60. And the next day, the overnight it's down. Then it has a rally, but it closes down sharply again, even deeper. You don't have that right now, and that's the only thing in trying to time the top. And my question, the question was, in the SMHs, where do you think it's going to go on the downside? So I'm saying I'm going through everything because of the technicals. This is Technical Friday, Chapman Wave Technical Friday. I want to go through all these different things to show you. Um, look, yes, Triple M breaks out. All of a sudden, it's in the Triple M and BA are, the, are going to be the shorter term favorites. Who, you know, out of the blue, they're doing nothing. And then, boom, 
And all of a sudden, fund managers say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Am I going to chase Apple? I could just get Triple M. And if Triple M goes even back to one of the left side peaks of consequence, this would be 130. That's a darn nice thing. Right. So that's the way the money's going. And that's the rotation. And that says, I don't see right now, just unless some, something happens, uh, some exigency, you never know. It could be uh, international, it could be whatever. It has to be really bad news that just permeates the markets day in and day out, at least for a week, to really build up momentum to have a very, very deep slide. So it's going to be a rollover correction. That's really what I'm looking at. So let's go back to the SMHs, see where the SMH is right now. Hasn't taken out the high yesterday of yesterday, but it's up at all, almost an all-time high within a couple of points of an all-time high. So here we go, advanced micro devices. A lousy chart, trying to rally, had a fantastic move. I think it's sort of out of favor here. And all of a sudden, Intel, which was being decimated by advanced micro devices, becomes a leader. This is what I'm talking about. The rotation is spectacular how that happens. Okay, what happens is NVDA, NVIDIA, struggling after making that double top high at about 480. Did I type that in or not? Well, I'll type it in now. At four, there it is. 480.88 on the 14th. I bet I did have there. There it is. I have it. All right. 480.80. Oh, 88. Is it 80 or 88 on the 14th? It's struggling. It's making this cup formation. This one's really working hard. The technicals are actually disappointing, but the nine is still over the 14, and that's good. And look at the weekly chart, potential leg D make, to make a slightly higher high. So you've got to wait for these things to unfold. Um, and yes, as I, I, want to, I don't want to talk out of turn, but we did have a short position in the semis. And it worked actually every, every day. It worked until it got taken out, the stops got taken out on that sudden big pop. And uh, so uh, I, we could have just taken, kept taking little bits off, little bits off. I didn't. I wanted to see if it was going to hold. It didn't hold. Just it was a nibble and a small position. So it was a very small position, um, a small loss, but a loss nevertheless. But I want to clarify, we are not in that. At this point, we're looking to see what happens on the SMH. Is going through the applied materials. Applied materials, a match. Fantastic company. Ha. Huh. That's funny. I just had a, a little text conversation with my buddy who sold his uh, semiconductor business. And now it must be like four or five years ago. Yeah, there must be something like that. Anyway, uh, 150.93, uh, making a new recovery high. 167.06 was the January 2, 2022 uh, all-time high, big cup formation. So that's acting very well. It looked very poor the other day. It made a lower low in the H pattern. And then all of a sudden, the H pattern turned into a big cup formation. I don't want to fight that trend. So I'm just going to say, I wouldn't add today. If you, I don't think you have added yet. You've just started your position. You said you're, going to, you're thinking of adding today. And I think you also want to listen to the show. I'm doing it with you because I'm in your camp. I'm saying, hey, when these semiconductors give it up, and you know, we, we spoke about this a year. I had this on the show. I, I spoke about it. And I said, when I'm reading about all the fabs that are being built, everything, there's going to be a glut of chips. But maybe the glut of chips happens just as the chips are really needed because uh, we're seeing productivity expand. I don't know. that That's too complex for me to see if that's occurring right now. But certainly if these stocks are making highs, uh, it's not a glut in the sense that it brings the prices down. Remember, semiconductor chips are a commodity. And they become even more commoditized. But at the same time, semiconductor chips are the crude oil of the 21st century. For the 1900s, crude oil was everything. And then as you got into the latter part, into the 70s, 80s, and 90s, 1990s, that is, into the 2000s, now we're talking about something else. We're talking about chips being the oil of the uh, 21st century. In fact, going on for, for who knows how many decades, it's going to be chips. Prices will come down, but maybe they stabilize because they're always be be becoming faster. 
So that's what I want you to say. Is just be careful. I'm going to give you all the numbers in a moment. I did want to finish with uh, LRCX, which is another great company, Lamb Research, uh, almost at an all-time high. 721.03 is the high today and so far. And 7... Ooh, did I not write that in? No, I didn't. It was a, a Chapman Wave two-bar reversal. At 693, round number high. Oh, my, I forgot. I once wrote this in. And then there was a fractionally higher high the next month. Seven. So seven. Here we go. Seven. Eight. Eight. 731.45. Oh, isn't that interesting? Seven. So 731. We haven't got the yet. It's the high point of way. 11 points. We can do that at some point. Land research. So, I'll give you the numbers as soon as I get back, and then all the other questions that came in, including a um, question about SLX, which is the steel ETF. I'll be back. Attention traders! Larry Pesavento, the renowned trading mastermind, is holding an exclusive live trading event on Wednesday, August 2nd. From 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time, transform your trading skills with the real-time wisdom of a Wall Street veteran. Just $295 gets you a front row seat to this power packed session, plus a month free of Larry's sought after newsletter, Fibonacci 24 7, a $97 value. Elevate your strategies, decode the markets, and achieve your financial goals. Remember, this event will be archived for all attendees, and Larry only does a few of these a year. Don't miss this opportunity. Sign up today at TFNN.com. Secure your future and start trading smarter. TFNN. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, yeah, so let me just wrap this up here. So the semiconductor um, the SMH is still with very good technicals. When I do a left side, right side test of the technicals, the MACD is very weak, the stochastics very weak, on balance volume is very good, a little bit overbought. That nine period moving average is what's keeping everything intact. If you look at the left side, right side price time, it's going to a leg D. It could extend today, it might not, we never know. But uh, it might even make a peak D today. 
But going to an all-time high, you know, stocks that go, in, instruments that go to an all-time high, especially when it's an ETF, a, a conglomerate, um, it doesn't just stop on a dime. So it needs, it needs time. So I'm just going to say I would not get too carried away. I'd rather be looking at lower lows and lower highs rather than try. In this particular instance, the reason why I love to try my best for subscribers and for myself to try to pick the exact moment of a turn is because it gives you so much flexibility. When, For instance, if you pick a low like we had back in uh, the last one was October of this past year, we bought the uh, Dow and the S SDOW three times along the Dow or back in uh, – what was it, uh, March of 2020, still have that. Um, it's because when you get it at a low, when it rallies up and then it starts this gyration trying to retest, you've got room. Otherwise, you've got to keep going in and out, in and out. This way, you can just watch it and say, okay, take me out. That's fine. And then as it moves higher, you can raise your stop, your core position, and trade around it. That's what we love doing. <clears throat> so this is what I'm looking at here, that the SMH is – this is an absolutely key moment because it's a key moment for the SMH, but it's also for because where the SMH goes, generally you're going to see the, the, the market, overall market, go in that direction. So I'm just saying I don't – I had a clue when it was pulling back, and it did, but now that it's gone back up, how it goes back up and how that strength is generated and how something like an Intel can have an impact because if it's not going back – to the 200 p moving average of 32, it's up here at 36, and it's actually just starting a move to the upside. That's going to give you some room. So I'd be a little careful um, of being so specific in a sector that's making all-time highs. So I'm just going to say, stay with what you've got. I wouldn't add to this particular point. I'd rather add on weakness as we see that nine period moving, even if it gets close. We've seen that it gets close and then it springs back up. When it crosses negative, I think you're going to have a chance to say, now I can implement bigger turns. So just stay with your stop. I have a feeling the 65 level is 165 is not going to be reached, but I that's just a feeling. It's got nothing to do with the price. So just be real careful there. Um, especially since it's come back so strongly in the cup formation. All right, I'm done with that. So SLX, this is the steel sector. Look at this. Double top, and then it goes to all-time highs. Now, you see this monthly chart of the Van Eck Vector steel ETF. Look how it's making higher highs and higher lows, and look how it keeps stalling at 68.2. Let me double-check this. This was back in May of 2021. It goes to 62.22. There it is. Okay. And then it pulls back pretty sharply to the 50 area. That's 18 points, a lot of them. And then it goes to a fractional new high. It goes to 69 something, was it? It goes to. Is that a 70? Yeah, 70.43. 70.43, two and a half points higher after all that. And then it goes to a deeper correction to the 49, 48 area. And then it rallies to a fractionally higher high. What does it go to? It goes to 70.38. And then it pulls back, and now it's gone to what? A high at 71 point, uh, 70.96, a new recovery high. Uh, sorry, new all-time. Nope. Let's just open this up. There it is. No, all-time, I thought so. The all-time high was back here. Peak A, B, C, D, A, peak E right here with the silent doji. I remember this as well. Back in the monthly chart, back in February of 2011. And then it started on its way down. And it made a lower low. And most of the indices did not make lower lows after the 2009. Remember, we timed that to the day exactly. Buying the diamonds on the 6th of March, 2009. <clears throat> okay. So, in other words... You've got a little bit of a way to go, not much, for the all-time high of, did I do that? Oh, that was the, that was, oh, the SLX, now I remember. SLX only saw in 2006, so I couldn't really tell. It did go peak A, B, C, D, E, but I don't know where it started from. And then it pulled back. That was the first real move that I could identify a low. Now I've got, I remember it all. So that high that was made 
was a high, but we could have even been high at some point. But that was 2008, May of 2008, and the price was 114.05. So that's got a long way to go. All right. So new recovery high, not an all-time high. Oh, I could do a left side, right side price time much. I'll do that over the weekend. I don't want to do it now. <clears throat> so yes, the SLX is acting really well. If you look at X, which is um, uh, this is U.S. Steel. Look at the monthly chart. Yeah, just okay. But look at uh, NUE, New Core. Almost going to 187.90 was all time high back in 2022. Plunges to 100. Almost uh, was a 46% decline or more. And then it goes back, peak A, peak B, and now it's trying for a C. It's at 168. This is one of the best. STLD is one that I, I followed for years and years because I thought it was uh, um, metal chairs or something like that. But Steel Dynamics, there's steel products with hot rolls, steel. Oh, CLF. Let me just do this before I get CLF. Cleveland Cliffs. Uh, I think it's roll steel, Cliff and Cliff, not doing that well. So let's go back to what I was looking at now, if I can even remember what I was looking at. Oh, STLD. Look at that. Uh, yes, it's pulling back at short term, um, but it has done very nicely. Hot roll uh, steel. Look, 200 period moving average right there, key support. Watching this closely. Um, now, so within the SLX, SLX, that was the question. I like it. I like it for the long term for 2023, but on a short term basis, what I am looking at, and this is going to be something that I have to monitor very closely because it goes all together with the um, with the cyclicals, the deep cyclicals, and that goes with Caterpillar, even though they really don't. I mean, Caterpillar is Caterpillar. Caterpillar is almost at an all time high. 266.04 was high in January of uh, 220 of uh, this year. And it makes a beautiful cup formation. And now it's testing. It looks almost like the steel stock. Look at that in peak D. And now it's just going sideways, uh, almost at the high on the left, on the right side with the monthly chart. Um, so the question about XLF, you know, this is one of those. I The person asked me, I don't believe you do options. You, you've never done options. If you're doing options, I would say 35. I would buy a September or October uh, call on XLF, just a long term and just don't even worry about it. Just let it sit there. I'd, I'd probably want to go as close to in the money as possible, but it's about to be playing two and a half point three there. Uh, if it works out, you should easily get that back. But Chris, I need just a moment here to say, uh, what am I looking for? Oh, and I did give the downside effect. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. 
Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, so question ten. Oh wait, let me just one thing at a time. I better write this down because I'm gonna forget. Okay, uh, uh, uh. okay. That's X. Okay, so let's just get to these right away. Where would downside targets be on SMHs if and when they finally take a breather? <clears throat> well, if you're looking at a 12% correction, what happens if it goes to 164? Doesn't stop you out, and then it turns down. <laughs> that's a different 20% than it is from 160. So I'd rather, I'd rather do this. If at any point in the next, I'm going to make it two weeks because I want to get into August. So about the second, let's make it um, uh, August is coming up on, on Tuesday. By the close on Friday the 11th, if the SMHs have had any two-day close below 152, that's the trough was right there a couple of days ago, a week or so ago, at 152.29. A close below 151 suggests that it would then go to the next level, 146. <clears throat> I don't think with the 200 period moving average, <clears throat> uh, just I don't even know where it is in this particular instrument's right here, it's SMHs. Look at that, way down to 130. We're way above it. Look how often it tested it and it spiraled to the upside. I have to look at the 50-period move average and say somewhere in the 148 area, that's, that's something that's going to be important. But I would just say to you that if you get the daily chart, nine-period moving average to cross negative, probably the SMHs are going to go below 151. If they go below 151, then the weekly chart, nine-period moving average, although it's going to move slower, will start to creep down. Until that turns negative, you're not going to get more than a digestive moment. So I'd go one step at a time and I'd say, if you're going to risk at 150, at 160, 10% on the upside, then you need to anticipate at least, I would say 15% on the downside. So, and that gets you all into this area that we're talking about of the one, the 140s, if it goes to the 163, 164 area. So I'd go one step at a time. I'd much rather you're shorting from a higher level or as a, the, I don't see that the tide has turned. I see the tide as potentially turning based on the MACD and stochastic, but not on balance volumes with the M-shaped pattern. And that weekly chart, the bigger tide is up. And the monthly tide says, what are you talking about? I'm making all-time highs. The stochastic said 86. So I, to me, it was a shorter-term trade. If you're looking at the longer-term trade, it has to work perfectly. And I'd, I'd be looking at Intel. as a, If Intel gives back the gains by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, then you're looking at something that says, okay, all NVIDIA should be running out of energy. All of these should be running out of energy. And advanced market advice is a bit of a clue. That's the way I would look at it. Price, one. Uh, uh, one, 151 is the area to watch 
for the bigger move to the downside, but that 146 is as tremendous support. Hope that helps you. SLX, um, do you want to go long from here? Well, stocks and instruments that make new all-time highs tend to stay on the new all-time list over months. So in other words, it could pull back, but then it could get back there. So I like what I'm seeing. And I know that uh, in your case, uh, who asked me the question, I know that you look at the bigger picture. So I'm going to say, why don't you put your foot in the door at 69.21, knowing that is that's just your instrument that tells you if there's a close on a weekly basis that says for the next two weeks, there is a close next two out of three weeks, in other words, going to about the third week of August, if there had been two closes above the high that was made at 70.38 on the week of the third at peak D, I, I, that's leadership. That's going to that's gonna go together with PAVE, which is the, uh, look at this, PAVE, testing all-time highs in, in a rectangle formation, probably going to pull back a little bit from here. But that's also broken out of that same kind of resistance line. So I'm just saying I don't think it's ready because we're a little we starting to get a little bit toppy here. But at the same time, get your foot in the door. It's going to just give you a much better feel for how it's 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 working when any individual sectors like the the global infrastructure development ETF um, PAVE PAVE if it starts to pull back. Uh, if any of the single stocks in the in the steel sector start to pull back. Good. We got that out the way. Now I can go to MUFG. M-U-F-G. Now, I have to just tell you, <clears throat> first of all, don't get a heart attack, anybody. On the left side, here's the daily chart. It trades overseas. Mitsubishi. I, I forgot the M. Mitsubishi. No, 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 Misu. Don't leave out a T when it comes to Miso. Mitsu, there you go. Mitsubishi, oh, and I made it a capital. Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Inc. All time, no, not all time high. It made an all time high up much, much higher way back in, um, way back in, way back in 2006. It hit, it went into the 16s. So, yeah, but this is. A really this is an outstanding move. So this is Japan. Let's just have a look at the NK. This is a Nike. I haven't updated it. This is a Nike continuous contract, almost at all-time highs. I remember it on my daily chart when I used to hand chart. I used to hand chart the FTSE 30. I just don't even get the information on the FTSE anymore. I hand charted the uh, Nike and uh, Nikkei, and I hand charted the Dow and the S&P. Uh, with engineering paper, I used to have to stick the pages together because it got so high. And uh, I, my, I think I got a, an E, not an F, but an E on the continue on the closing price contract on my daily chart. I got it somewhere here. One day I'll show a picture of it. Um, and uh, that was was that thirty thousand? I can't remember thirty nine thousand, whatever it was. Um, all right. So now what we're looking at a really good comeback for the Nikkei. But Mitsubishi, oh, now I have to look at this, uh, the, the symbol, M-U-G, oh, no, I forgot it to come, M-U-F-G, there it is, okay. Um, this is a slight, an even better looking chart. Now, I don't know why you're asking me this, Sapiki, because you know it's looking fantastic. I wouldn't do anything at this point. You know my rule, if it's making all-time highs, it's doing fantastically, and you have to ask the question, it means why don't you take a little bit off just to kind of money management part of it and ease your, any worry that you have that it's going to start to pull back. This is looking fantastic. I'm sure you're in it. That's why you're asking me, uh, oh, oh, what to do? Mm, maybe not. Oh, to add. Yeah, I, that's, the, that's a really good question. I'm calling this a B. It should be an, a G slash B in the monthly chart. But the way it broke out, I just, I, I'll change that if I have to. But I think this is a B. This is an E in the weekly chart. And this new spike to the upside, is that an A? Or is this from here, A, B, C, D, E? Is this an F slash A? I don't know. All I can say is I would add at not eight. 40, I'd ha you'd have to have a lot of patience now to add. I don't want you to add up here, and then your average cost is just, you've messed up your average cost. Rather on a dip towards, give me a yell. We'll look at this uh, when it gets down to the 750, 740 area. And, you know, I was, uh, I wasn't, 
uh, but it was family thing, so I couldn't, I didn't, have, I didn't know when I'd have free time. I wanted to call you to have a game of tennis. I did play tennis with my son, but I didn't get a chance to give you a call to play tennis. Next time I'm in town, uh, I'll give you a yell. But yeah, have patience. This is done fantastically. You need to, you have to wait for the full day. Just five days ago, to the 740s. <laughs> okay. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So let me just on a purely uh, uh, very short-term basis. Uh, yes, we did make a peak in the one-minute chart. We are making lower highs and lower lows. Yes, it's a peak in the five-minute chart. But look, that nine is still very strong. So it means you have to drop sharply to get the uh, green to turn pink. So I still see some buying, but I wouldn't be surprised with options expiration if you're going to get some sudden, sudden dip in the general market. That's just kind of what they do on Fridays. But how that affects, we'll do an announcement. When I do my show for my uh, tomorrow when I do my uh, market overview for my subscribers. Um, I will show a bunch of things that are really pertinent as we're speaking. And what happens over the next few days is going to be important. But that dark news cloud cover is what's needed to continue any sell-off. It's no use having a one-day sell-off like we had yesterday from the high. You've got to have a determination to say, oh, my God, I've I, I got to get out. I've got to get out. Sell, sell, sell. We don't have that right now. That's the reason. If you don't have sell, buyers come in. So just let me do this one thing. If I skipped anything, um, I t Twilio, T-W-L-O. 
Whoops. Yep, there it is. Big spike up, and now it's pulling back. Just be careful. Software communications. Something tells me the way that it came back from that peak D at the 200 period moving average that it's just kind of stuck here for a moment. So I'm going to stay with that. Next question came in. Did I read that right? Oh, um, FSLR. Oh, look at that. That's what we're seeing so many of these candles. Look at this. 224.50 spikes up to a new recovery high, and then it's now at 197. These candles that fail, hmm, they can be quite devastating. We saw one yesterday. Oh, I said I'd do this, and I didn't. I did As we're going out, my engineer will be able to take this. Look, this is the DNEX. The reason why we have it, but I'm not going to add to it now. I'm going to wait for it. Oh, I did on the wrong chart. Oh, that's it. DNEX. This, this is what you got to be. Come here.